scanning from a vulnerability perspective when it comes to kubernetes when it comes to docker it's incredibly crucial i mean there there's a reason why there's a national vulnerability database there's a reason why there's a severity score there's a reason why there are best practices because when organizations don't follow them well i think we kind of all know what happens right we uh we see cybersecurity attacks and threats and all of that stuff all over the literal news just not even just in the tech space but literally in the news and a lot of those things come from poor configuration and you can catch that poor configuration incredibly early on and it's pretty simple to do so let's go ahead and take a look at this docker file here now i have a docker file that's essentially just building a go app and what i can do is and i'm going to use checkoff for this i can run checkoff minus d i can do a dot which means that it's going to look in the existing directory and that's where my docker file is and then i'm going to say framework docker file it's going to take a second to run because i know this thing has a bunch of vulnerabilities in it but as you can see we have an output here right so for example ensure that a user for the container has been created ensure that the health check instructions have been added to container images and there are a few other ones you know like for example use add instead of copy don't use the latest image for your base image so there are a lot of good things in here that we could easily change but here's the problem i ran this locally and that doesn't really do much for myself or for my team to really understand what's actually happening inside of my docker file so we can actually do this in our ci process so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up this main.yaml and what this does is this runs a checkoff scan literally what we just did locally but in ci in our ci pipeline and in this case i'm using github actions but you can do the same thing for like gitlab for example i've done the same thing in gitlab you can do the same thing in any ci platform now with github actions there is an action specific with checkoff but if this action doesn't exist in whatever ci platform you're using you can just run you know the standard command so you could just literally run checkoff minus d dot or, or wherever the docker file is and then the framework docker file and you can run this as a shell command and pretty much uh, i would assume any ci platform and then you know you, you'll essentially get the same results so let's go over this really quick i just have my name of the ci pipeline on workflow dispatch means that i'm just deploying with a button it's not automatic when code hits my repo so you know continuous delivery versus continuous deployment i'm saying that i'm going to run this on ubuntu and then i have two steps here that's it I'm checking out the code and then I'm using the checkoff GitHub action to run my Docker file scanning in my container image scanning directory. So let's head over to GitHub actions and see how this works. All right, so I'm at GitHub actions here. And as you can see, I have my workflow that's already created. If you don't, what you can do is you can click actions, you can click new workflow, and then you can click set up workflow yourself. And then literally you could just, you know, copy and paste the workflow that I just showed. And that workflow does exist in this repo here, right under GitHub workflow. So you can go ahead and you can copy and paste this into your own environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to click on my Docker file vulnerability scan and I'm going to click run workflow. And it's going to take a few minutes here. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of time and we will be right back. All right, and it took about 29 seconds here and notice that it failed. So let's go ahead and click on that. We'll click on our build. And as you can see, the test actually ran. So we did run checkoff. We did run it against our Docker file. We can see that it's looking at our Docker file right here. However, it did fail. And the reason why it failed is because there are errors here. So the really good thing about running checkoff in your pipeline is your code won't build if there are errors, right? And it's doing the same thing here. If checkoff fails and he passes, the code won't build, the Docker file won't build, and then you won't have a container image with vulnerabilities. This will show you, oh, okay, I got a few vulnerabilities here. Let me go and fix it and then rebuild my code. So if we go back to just, you know, the workflow here really quick, this is a great starting point and then after this what you can do is you can have another step to for example build that docker file and turn it into a container image but only if this step passes if the vulnerability step passes if it doesn't the container image won't build